Hello again and welcome to, well I believe it's episode 100 of the Bible Project. That's a cause for minor celebration. But it also means we're at episode 31 of our second season working together through the book of Genesis. And as I mentioned last time, this episode is is called Responding to Temptation. I would remind you that the transcript for all these talks are available on the podcast notes page of the audio version of the podcast on the Buzzsprite website. I hope over these last few episodes I've managed to teach you a little about how Satan works and how also you can recognize temptation when it appears. But how would you like to know how you could not only recognize temptation but respond to temptation when it appears? I want to do that by giving you three spiritual tips on how to handle temptation. And the first one is, you should know the Word of God. There's no substitute for that. Psalm 119 tells us, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Remember in the New Testament when Jesus was tempted by Satan, he resisted by accurately quoting scripture. This is documented for us in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4. As a matter of fact, in those accounts, Satan throws three temptations at Jesus and three times Jesus is seen to rebuke him and resist him by quoting scripture. I wonder if you know which book Jesus quoted when he resisted Satan in the wilderness. He quotes the same book three times. Well, in fact, it was the book of Deuteronomy. How much do you know about Deuteronomy? If Satan tempted you, do you feel you know enough about this book and other books to deal with him? Well, stick around over the next few years and together we hopefully will indeed get to know quite a lot more about the Word of God, which by itself will enable us to handle Satan and his devious ways. So number one, when it comes to responding to temptation, and resisting it you must know the Word of God. If you get to know the Word of God you can spot deception and you can recognize an outright lie when it appears. It's that simple. You see if you know the truth it then becomes easier to spot what is false because you have a plumb line, a a measure with which to set it against. So number one the first thing is you must know the Word of God. The second thing that you need to do when you face temptation is pray. How about this for a prayer? Do you recognize this? Lead us not into temptation. Of course that's in the opening of the Lord's Prayer. As Christians we are often very good at going to God with prayer lists. We are very good at asking God to do the give us our daily bread part of the Lord's Prayer but we're not so good perhaps at asking God to protect us from being led into temptation. When things go wrong we're usually okay at asking God to intervene and help us out but maybe we should be praying more often by asking God to intervene before the situation arises. Even Jesus himself when confronted with his own suffering and foresaw his death, prayed that he might be able to go through what he needed to go through if it was truly in the will of God. Jesus prayed before any possible temptation might have appeared by offering him a way out, an easy way out if you like, an easier way out. So number one, you must know the word of God. Number two, you should pray. But number three is don't plan or prepare for sin. In Romans chapter 13, second half of verse 14, Paul says this about this specific matter. But put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. That's an important scripture because it's like saying if you've got a gambling problem then don't go to the betting shop. Whatever your problem or temptation, don't make provision for the flesh. If you've got a particular problem, a potential slip-up zone, then don't put yourself in that zone at a risk of being tempted. For example, the advice from men in this day and age might be to be very careful what might cause you to look upon things lustfully. 
Billy Graham once illustrated this concept brilliantly when he said, Maybe you can't prevent the bird from landing in the tree, but you sure can prevent it building a nest there. Whatever it is that tempts you, just don't go there. I believe this extends to all sorts of areas of our lives, not just the things we hear and the things we see, but it also includes the people we hang out with. If you surround yourself by people who lead you astray or tempt you into things that you know are not good for you, then don't hang out with them. Make no provision for the flesh. Doesn't that just make good sense? Isn't it just like what your mother told you when she told you not to play or mix with the bad kids? So be careful what you look at, be careful what you listen to, but most of all be careful who you hang around with, as they will influence you, and influence you greatly. Be careful about what you watch on TV, be careful about what you look at online, and be careful by the people you surround yourself with, because they will have an impact for you. Don't make provision for the flesh. It's just simple yet as serious as that. Someone once said, After starting my new diet, I altered my usual route from work to home to avoid passing the fish and chip shop. Then one day I accidentally forgot and I drove the old route and as I approached I could smell the smell of fish and chips wafting up the street. I said to myself, this is no accident. So I prayed, Lord, it's up to you. If you think it's okay for me to stop and call for fish and chips today, then create a parking space directly in front of the shop for me. And sure enough, eighth time round the block, there it was, miraculously, a parking space right in front of the fish and chip shop. That, my friends, is making provision for the flesh. Okay, everyone, that's it for this time. Now, the place to go for all the links to this ministry and other ministries and podcasts that I do is the podcast notes section of this podcast on the Buzzsprout website. There you'll find links to the Facebook page, my YouTube channel, the sister podcast, the Living in Faith Everyday podcast, and also links even to my SoundCloud page where I create the background music and sound design for this podcast. And there's also, even if you're that way inclined, a place where you can support the podcast and the other ministries to the tune of £1 a month, which really helps with the funding and costs of doing this. But other than that, I really trust you've been blessed by our time together, and I hope to see you all here again very soon.